Hi and welcome back to Rideshare Buddy UK and my name's Kevin and today I'm going to ask, well I'm going to say or predict my top three predictions for drivers with Uber in 2024. What do we need to be looking out for in the coming year and what changes could Uber be making? Well, number one... I think Uber is going to have to tackle this cancellation issue that they have. Uh, they've had uh, data from the AutoCab Now software, which is traditional taxi software, for a couple of years now, and they must know the difference between the cancellation rates of local taxis and Uber. And Uber, I predict, is atrocious, and they're going to have to tackle that. Uh, for example, when was it? Wednesday, day after Boxing Day, when I did a job, I picked up a young mother with two kids. When I accepted the job, I got a message back from her saying, please, please don't cancel this job. I have two small children and I need to get home to bed. This is something that regularly happens with Uber. Passengers begging drivers not to cancel. As it was, this young mother had a two-year-old child and a newborn had been born on Christmas Eve who needed to go home. She'd spent two and a half hours and had had seven drivers cancel on her and she needed to get her children home. Uber has to tackle this issue. Cancellations was never an issue, but now uh, local authorities are waking up to it and it's only ever started because of rideshare, like uh, apps like Bolt and Uber. And I know in Wales there's plans to bring in a points-based system. So if drivers have a lot of cancellations, and a lot of complaints, and local authorities get a lot of complaints about them, they'll be given points. And under a tutting up procedure, if they cancel too many times, they lose their licence because they're no longer a fit and proper person to hold a private hire licence. That's one good way of dealing with it. But Uber needs to deal with it for their own business plans. They've admitted that um, rider growth is now slower than driver growth. And that's to be expected. Uber has gone through a very fast um, startup period where there's, it's always easy to get new customers when you're a new co company. The difficulty becomes when you become an established company, that initial growth of uh, new, new people stops and then you have to start working hard on getting repeat business and then you have to start working hard at pulling in customers from the competitors. Now Uber I think is going to take the cash route, that's why I'm going to introduce cash, they need to try and reinvigorate passenger growth uh, but I don't think that's going to work, not until they tackle the cancellation issue. Tackling this cancellation issue that they have will do far more for growing their customer base long term and sustainably than taking cash customers and they'll keep their drivers more. So that's the thing I think one Uber is gonna start tackling is uh, driver cancellations. There's no need for it. You know how much you're gonna get paid. Um, so you should, once you've accepted the job, there should be no real need to cancel. Um, at the moment, it's too easy. Uh, you, you drive a car down the street, you can't get down to the end because they're uh, double parked. Oh, cancel a job. Um, it's a dead end street. You don't want to go dead end. Cancel a job. You drive up, you see a lady with loads of shopping. Don't want to open up the booth. It's raining. Cancel a job. Uh, easy to do on uh, ride share apps. Not so easy to do when you work for a local company because the, uh, the uh, telephone operator will tell you to grow a set of balls and get out of the car and fix the problem. And they don't take cancellations so lightly. You're much more to, likely to get penalised uh, and get kicked off their platform or kicked out of their radio network if you have too many cancellations. Not like that with Uber. Cancel it for any reason. They don't give a shit. Um, they're playing the big numbers games. Well, those big numbers are now coming to an end. Passenger growth is slowing. They have to start acting like a proper taxi company now. And uh, rider cancellation, or driver cancellations is what they've got to tackle. So that's number one. Expect to see Uber taking action on driver cancellations. 
So number two, this is going to uh, set cats amongst the pigeons, I think. Number two, fare drops. I think we're going to see uh, driver fares falling in relation to wages. And I say this because Uber are bringing out uh, AI to set prices for drivers. Now, I think they're going to go to a cost plus model. And by that, I mean, I think they're going to look at a job, look at the cost of the job, and then they'll add on top of that cost of doing that job, national minimum wage. So you'll basically be being paid national minimum wage. And the agreement they've come to with uh, the low pay unit and inland revenue is that the uh, rate of cost for the ten first 10,000 miles is 45p a mile. And then after 10,000 miles, it drops down to 25p a mile. So I think with AI, you're going to get individual pricing coming out and you're going to get lower fares. So for instance, you may have a driver who's just started, they haven't used up that 10,000 mile allowance, first 10,000 mile allowance yet, and an established driver who has, uh, that first driver will get paid more because his expenses are going to be estimated at 45p a mile, and that uh, long-term driver is going to get paid less uh, because his expenses are based on 25p a mile. So I think if you look at, uh, I've done some testing on this, on some of my jobs that I've done, I've, I've done the cost plus modelling on it, and it's not far off as it is. Ignore your reservations, because reservations you get paid a lot more, but on longer distance jobs, and I'm talking £12 and over, if you look at the mileage that you do, and the time that you do from when you accept the job to when you drop off, and you apply a cost plus basis, so 45p a mile, and national minimum wage, you're not too far off what's being paid at the moment under dynamic pricing. I think Uber will use the new national minimum wage in April uh, as a way to inflate out the differential, so you basically turn into a minimum wage employed or minimum wage earning driver. Uh, and you can see that it's their stated policy. Uh, I don't know if you've read that Forbes article where you've shown the uh, this big article a couple of weeks ago and the driver earnings has just really dropped down, right down. And Uber's response to that was, our aim is to make sure that rideshare drivers, our drivers, earn the equivalent of other service industry workers. Now, other service industry workers that we refer to was things like waiters, bartenders, uh, shop workers. These are all minimum wage earners. They're all on minimum wages. So Uber's task and the uh, task of the AI is to send drivers' earnings down to minimum wage levels. And that's what's going to happen, particularly next year, is what's going to happen. You'll get individual pricing of jobs depending on how far you've got to run, this already happens, uh, and how many miles you got left in the bank as to your expenses as to 45p or 25p a mile, and then they'll add on their uh, holiday pay plus the 12% holiday pay aspect. So that's what's going to happen next year. Prices are going to be individually priced per driver, and it's going to be on a cost plus model. And I think we can be able to tell this, because from April for the first 10,000 miles, which is about three months for your average private eye driver or Uber driver, 10,000 miles in three months. You'll get paid a higher rate because your expenses are 45p a mile. And then after, say, April, May, June, end of June, July, August, as you run out of those 10,000 miles, what you get paid for each job on a regular basis will drop because now you're only going to be allocated 25p a mile expenses. Problem with that is... I don't know of any car really that you can run on an expense allowance of 25p. Not in this job. Not with the mileage it does and repairs and maintenance and stuff like that. So effectively, you're going to be subsidising jobs once you move on to that 25p a mile expense rate uh, out of your minimum wage earnings. 
not going to be good. But that's what I think is going to happen next year. And we'll notice that in the second half of next year as AI starts to really take into impact uh, on driver pricing and uh, going out to a cost plus uh, basis leading to falling fares. So that's something to look out for. We'll see that towards the second half of next year. And the final thing I think we're going to look at really relates to the previous one as well. We're going to start seeing drivers getting national minimum wage top-ups. As they move on to a cost-plus basis, um, the risk of you not earning enough money to hit national minimum wage is going to increase, and so we're going to start seeing top-ups. So far, I've never seen any Uber driver get a national minimum wage top-up. It's never happened because Uber gives you, keeps you just above that minimum wage level. But I think as the AI learns uh, the business, as the AI brings in cost plus to shorter and shorter jobs, the risk of you not earning because of maybe traffic or some other issue, earning national minimum wage levels is going to increase. And so we'll see your top-ups and you'll have a weekly national minimum wage top-up to bring you in line with national minimum wages. That may not happen early next year, may happen towards the end of next year. I think definitely in 2025 that's going to happen if national minimum wages go up again. And fair stones, it may, it's going to be very borderline from April onwards when national minimum wages go up. I don't think Uber will increase fares. I think they'll use that increased national minimum wage to inflate out the differential in earnings between what drivers are currently getting and national minimum wage. So that's my three predictions for 2024. Number one, action taken on cancellations, driver cancellations. Number two, AI using a cost plus method to bring down your earnings and uh, make better profits for Uber. And number three, earnings getting so close that we'll now start to see national minimum wage top of payments being paid. So that's it, my predictions for Uber drivers in 2024. Hope you enjoyed it. Might not be great news, but I think uh, it's going to happen. Uh, so until next time, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'd like to hear your comments about that. What do you think is going to happen in 2024 with Uber and drivers? So until next time, safe driving and a profitable year to you.